Hi, my name is Priya Ruzroch, and I'm a physician and data scientist at the Makelnix Orthopedic Surgery Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. In this short video, I would like to introduce you to machine learning applications in medical research and maybe encourage you to study more about this cutting edge and exciting technology. Let's start by taking a glance at how quickly this field of machine learning research is growing in the field of medicine. As can be seen in this left chart, the number of machine learning articles indexed in PubMed has grown at an almost exponential rate in recent years. On this right hand, you can see that this trend is not limited to one or a few medical specialties. Instead, this growth of research can be observed in almost all specialties, including those areas where few predicted AI would have such a profound impact just a few years ago. With this short introduction in mind, let's define machine learning. To do this, we must first establish what we mean by artificial intelligence as a broader concept. Artificial intelligence, or AI for short, is any method that allows machines to perform tasks normally performed by humans. As this definition stands, a calculator could be included in the category of artificial intelligence devices. However, when we talk about AI nowadays, what we usually mean is machine learning, a subset of AI systems that can learn automatically from data without being explicitly programmed. This means that machine learning algorithms may study human performance in various domains and intelligently learn to duplicate it in the most effective manner possible. In the following slides, you will see a few of these intelligent use cases in action. Deep learning is a well-known subfield of machine learning that uses specialized algorithms named neural networks to glean insights from massive datasets. While it's true that deep learning algorithms are widely regarded as the cutting edge of the machine learning world at the moment, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that conventional or traditional machine learning tools have their own unique applications and in certain use cases can outperform deep learning algorithms. Let's move on to the question of how computer algorithms can learn their knowledge through observation. To demystify this, we can use a really basic example. Let's assume we are after a mathematical model that can draw a line between the red and blue points on this graph. Both you and I can immediately visualize a single line similar to the green one depicted here that would accomplish this labeling well. Well, what we can do can also be replicated by a simple machine learning model, albeit via a different procedure. The model will first examine the available training data and then attempt to estimate the parameters of a linear equation that can predict labels for the training data that are as close as possible to the true labels. Machine learning models learn iteratively. In other words, a machine learning model's initial predictions are widely inaccurate. However, when more and more data is observed and over time, the model learns how to improve the accuracy of its predictions by applying mathematical principles to guide its performance. The data used to train the machine learning models is referred to as training data, and the iterative process is known as training. The figures you can see on the screen demonstrate this procedure by displaying how well a real machine learning model performed when it attempted to learn a simple task like the one we have been discussing in this example. In each graph, the blue line represents the ground truth line that the model should ideally predict, while the red line represents the model's prediction. You can see that the red line gets closer and closer to the blue one as the training goes on, almost overlapping the blue line after a certain point. I would like to give you another perspective of how machine learning models work with our straightforward example. Here is a simple equation representing the ideal line we were looking for in our example. If you can recall from your school days, we used to look at equations like these and find pairs of x and y that could fit in them for our math homework. However, a machine learning model accomplishes the complete opposite. It examines numerous real x and y pairings and attempts to create a mathematical equation that can predict most of those combinations. In this case, the model will be taught the parameters of this equation, which are the values 2 and 100. Therefore, a trained machine learning model and an untrained one differ in their parameters. While an untrained model has some random parameters and can only do as well as make random predictions of the data at hand, a trained model has the best values for its parameters that can be utilized to label some unknown data as is expected from the model. Let us now complicate our scenario to better understand what distinguishes deep learning models from other models. If we reposition the red and blue dots as seen on the screen, it would be hard to create a straight line that precisely separates the two colors. However, a nonlinear curve, such as the one on the right hand side, can still be used to accomplish this task. This curve is what a deep learning model can predict for us. 
In other words, it can predict nonlinear equations to label the data at hand. Conventional machine learning models, on the other hand, often produce linear equations with limited uses. Another distinction is that because nonlinear equations are frequently larger and more sophisticated, deep learning models require more data to learn the optimal values of their parameters. This is the primary reason why we frequently require larger data sets to train deep learning models. Nonlinearity, on the other hand, adds its own unique magic to deep learning models. In contrast to conventional machine learning models, deep learning ones have no limitations on what they learn from data. The more data they observe, the more they will be able to learn. This is why deep learning models are often the default choice for machine learning tasks. Data scientists assemble large data sets for their objective task and begin experimenting with several deep learning models to determine which one learns the most from their data. We will go over some examples of these tasks shortly. Machine learning models can be categorized in several ways, but one popular approach is to classify them according to the type of data that they are applied to. In the field of medicine, machine learning models are typically applied to three types of data, tabular data, text data, and image data. Natural language processing is another name for using machine learning on text data, and computer vision is as another name for using machine learning on image data. Remember that machine learning models might also be used with other forms of data, such as sounds and music, but those applications are currently under research in the medical world. In the following minutes of this video, we will go through these three data types and briefly touch on how each sort of data is pre-processed for machine learning use cases. We will also discuss the most popular machine learning applications for each data type. Let us begin with the tabular data. This type of data requires the least amount of pre-processing because it is frequently presented in the form of spreadsheets from the start. To prepare such data for machine learning applications, data scientists merely need to ensure that each variable in their data is meaningfully and consistently represented with numbers. This may entail the encoding of some qualitative variables or the imputation of some missing data points, but pre-processing tabular data requires significantly less than other data types. After pre-processing, the rest of the machine learning process is comparable to what we have already covered. A model will iteratively process the data in order to determine ideal equation parameters that can predict a desirable variable, for example, a diagnostic outcome based on set of input variables. There are numerous applications for applying machine learning to tabular data. Machine learning can be used to produce diagnostic, prognostic, or therapeutic predictions about patients or to sift through their data and detect certain latent tendencies that have not yet been discovered. Machine learning approaches could also be used to impute missing tabular data more efficiently than other statistical techniques or to annotate data for large patient cohorts and aid in creating institutional or national registries. Last but not least, many recent machine learning models in the medical domain use tabular data in addition to other data types. A deep learning model, for example, can be trained to look at a patient's preoperative pelvic radiograph and clinical and demographic factors to predict the outcomes of a hip arthroplasty operation. Pre-processing of other kinds of data is not as simple as it was for tabular data. For test data, for example, data scientists must treat each sentence using procedures known as tokenization and embedding. Tokenization is a process by which a sentence is automatically broken down into simple standard words and punctuation marks known as tokens. During the embedding process, each token is replaced with a numerical value based on standard and universal dictionaries that may supply specific numbers for each token. Consider this sentence as an example in which each word has been turned into a single one-hot mathematical vector. Efficient processing of such sparse vectors necessitates various computer science adjustments that are not always easy to execute. Despite its challenges, training machine learning models on text data can lead to various intriguing applications. For example, machine learning models can be used to extract numerical variables from text data, for example, radiology or surgery notes, and automate the process of synthesizing tabular data for various reasons. Other types of models could search through medical text to see if a specific concept is there. A model, for example, can go through radiological reports and indicate those who have been assigned a specific diagnosis. Similar models could be used to connect disparate sets of concepts, such as mapping clinical concepts and diagnosis from one text to codified clinical guidelines created from another. Finally, natural language processing models could be utilized to improve human-machine interaction. They can be employed in speech-to-text technologies used by physicians to write reports or by surgeons to give verbal directions to surgical robots. Finally, let's look at the imaging data. We understand that all images, including medical imaging, are made up of pixels. 
Even three-dimensional medical imaging data, such as computer tomography scans or magnetic resonance imaging, can be viewed as a stacks of many two-dimensional slices, resulting in a collection of pixels in three dimensions. Because each pixel in an image has a numerical value, data scientists can treat each medical image as a distinct set of numbers. As an example, take a look at this man's image and see how it can be processed to become a grid of pixel values. These pixel values are subsequently fed into machine learning algorithms, which use them to learn meaningful signals. However, there is no one ideal strategy for processing and feeding these pixel values to machine learning models, and data scientists are constantly striving to create better models with more efficient ways of learning from these pixel values. When it comes to medical imaging, machine learning models have five primary uses. Consider an anterior-posterior chest radiograph as an example. A machine learning model may be taught to analyze this radiograph and determine whether or not it is from a patient with pneumonia. Such use cases are referred to as classification in the machine learning world. Another model can use the same radiograph to predict the patient's age or other quantitative parameters such as illness severity. This second application is known as regression. Segmentation and object detection models can be used to pinpoint a specific region of interest in this radiograph. A segmentation model will paint that region and an object detection model will draw a bounding box around it. Finally, there are generation models that can generate synthetic radiographs or in-paint a section of an incomplete or cropped radiograph with synthetic data as if it came from real patients. As you might expect, each application would be employed for various diagnostic, therapeutic, or informatic purposes. Now that you have heard about the fundamentals of machine learning and how it may be utilized in medicine, I would like to welcome you to read four instructional publications that our team at the May Clinic's Orthopedic Surgery Artificial Intelligence Laboratory has recently put together. These four manuscripts, published in the Journal of Arthroplasty, are aimed at physicians who are interested in machine learning and may want to use it in their clinical or research interest. The first of these four articles will go over the fundamental ideas of machine learning in greater depth, while the second through fourth paper will go over the applications and technicalities of machine learning for image, text, and tabular data respectively. We hope you enjoy reading these manuscripts and find them useful in your clinical or research career. With this, I would like to thank you for watching this video and wish you the best in exploring the very exciting world of machine learning. Thank you.